How many people have opened their presents already? Wow, you guys are... Okay, there was one guy who can confess he did. Me too. I open all my gifts. I can't wait till Christmas. <laughs> but did you get what you wanted is the question I wanted to ask. Here's what someone wrote to Santa on Twitter. Bet you didn't know Santa tweeted. It went like this. Dear Santa, my wish this Christmas is a big fat bank account and a slim body. Don't mix these two up like you did last year. <laughs> Christmas is a celebration of God's gift to us. His gift of his presence always and forever with us. Emmanuel, God with us. What does it mean God is with us? The meaning of Emmanuel, the meaning of Christmas, is that the creator of the universe has become a human being. Friends, I'm going to say that one more time and a little bit slowly so we can let it sink in. The creator of the universe has become a human being. The terrifying God who appeared in the Old Testament as a whirlwind and a blazing fire has become a vulnerable baby in order to be close to us. This is the greatest story the world has ever heard. This story is so seminal, so central to what it means to be Christian that it's impossible to overstate it. And it's the reason why we make such a fuss out of this day. We are celebrating the birth of our Savior. But this story of God becoming human is not an easy one for us to grasp. The doctrine of incarnation is not widely known or very well accepted. Even Google keeps wanting to change my search when I type in incarnation to reincarnation. It's difficult to wrap our thinking around the truth that God is born a man in a manger. For most people, it doesn't seem to do it for them. It's too simplistic, they tell me. And I think it's because we modern people want complex answers to life. Let me share a story with you about one man who came to understand in a profound way what it means that God is with us. This man was not a Scrooge nor a Grinch type. He was a kind, decent, mostly good man. He was generous to his family, upright in his dealing with other people, but he just didn't believe all this incarnation stuff, which the church talks about at Christmas time. It just didn't make sense, and he was too honest to pretend that it did. He just couldn't swallow this Jesus story about God coming to earth as a man. One Christmas Eve, he told his wife, I'm really sorry to distress you, dear, but I've decided not to go to church tonight with you. He said he'd feel like a hypocrite and that he'd rather just stay at home, but that he would wait up for them. So he stayed home while the rest of the family went to church to the midnight service. Shortly after the family left, the snow began to fall heavily, and uh, he went to the window to watch the snow getting thicker and thicker and heavier, and the wind was just howling and blowing hard. Then he went back to his fireside chair and began to read his newspaper. Minutes later, he was startled by a loud thud, then another thud, then another. It was sort of a thud or a, a thump. At first, he thought someone was throwing snowballs at his living room window. But when he went to the front door to investigate, he found a flock of birds huddled miserably in the snow. They had been caught in the storm, and in desperate search for shelter, they tried to fly through his large front window. Well, he couldn't let the poor creatures lie there and freeze. He had an idea. They had a barn, and that would provide some warm shelter. All he had to do was direct the birds to the barn. So he quickly put on his coat and boots and tramped through the deepening snow to the barn. He opened the barn door wide open and turned on the light. But the birds did not come in. 
Then he thought perhaps food might entice them in. So he hurried back to the house and got some breadcrumbs and sprinkled them on the snow to make a trail to the barn. Again, the birds ignored him. The breadcrumbs and the wide open barn door didn't do anything for the birds. They kept flopping away from him. He tried to shoo them into the barn by walking around them with his arms waving, but they just scattered in every direction except into the warm, lighted barn. The man realized that they were afraid of him. To them, he was a strange and terrifying creature. If only I could let them know that they can trust me, the man thought. I'm not trying to hurt them, but to help them. But any move the man made frightened the birds and confused them. They would just not follow him. They would not be led in because they feared him. If only I could be a bird, the man thought, and mingle with them and speak their language. Then I could tell them not to be afraid. Then I can show them the way. At that moment, the church bells rang and the sound reached his ears above the howling wind. He stood there listening to the bells as they rang out the good news of Christmas. The man sank to his knees in the snow. He realized what it meant that God is with us, that God became a man. Friends, that's the story that God has entered time and space. The infinite became vulnerable baby. I'll never forget this one time. I'm not sure if Mary Lou is going to remember this, but it was during a living Christmas tree practice, and the choir director at that time was Mary Lou Tompkins, and they had just welcomed their first grandchild. And I remember her lifting up her grandchild, Alora, and saying, God has come to us as a baby. At that moment, it hit me like a ton of bricks. It was like it was the first time. What an incredible God we have to leave all the glories of heaven and enter into history, not as a powerful king in a grand palace, but as a helpless babe in the arms of a teenager in a barn. The only true and historical reason for celebrating Christmas is as the birthday of Jesus Christ. And who celebrates the birthday of a dead person? Nobody. We are not celebrating the birthday of someone who's dead, but someone who's very much alive. Jesus Christ is alive, and that's why Christmas can be a true celebration of his love and hope, joy and peace today and every day to come. Listen to this letter to Santa. It said, Dear Santa, there are three boys who live in this house. There's Jeffrey, and he's two. There's David, and he's four. There's Norman, and he's seven. Jeffrey is good some of the time. David is good most of the time. Norman is good all the time, and I am Norman. The truth is, none of us is good all the time. Jesus Christ is God's gift to the world because none of us is good all the time. And the Bible tells us that through this child, God had a plan to save the world. Friends, we cannot look at the birth of Jesus Christ without seeing the cross in the shadow We must move from the cradle to the cross because God came to earth to do one thing that he could not do in heaven, and that is to die. He died to save us from our sins. But he did not remain dead. Jesus Christ was resurrected and is alive, and that is why we can say, God is with us. Dorothy Sayer, an author, wrote this about incarnation. She said, the incarnation means that for whatever reason, God chose to allow us to be limited and to suffer and to be subjected to sorrow and death. He nonetheless had the honesty and the courage to take his own medicine. 
He can ask nothing from us that he hasn't exacted of himself. He has himself gone through the whole human experience. From the trivial irritation of family life to the cramping restrictions of hard work and lack of money to the worst horrors of pain and humiliation to defeat, despair, and death. He was born in poverty. He died in disgrace. He suffered infinite pain, all for us. And he thought it well worth his while. Someone told me that a man goes through several stages in his relationship with Santa Claus. Stage one, he believes in Santa Claus. Stage two, he doesn't believe in Santa Claus. Stage three, he is Santa Claus. <laughs> Stage four, he looks like Santa Claus. <laughs> Perhaps some of you are going through different stages in your relationship with God. You believed, then you didn't believe. Then you got really busy with life and kids and career and so forth. Friends, God is with us in Jesus Christ. Let this Christmas be a time when you say yes to Jesus. Let this Christmas be the time when you renew your relationship with God. God has become human in Jesus Christ. This is the greatest news. This is the greatest gift the world has received. Accept this truth and walk in the newness of life, knowing you are loved by God and that you are never alone because God is with us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. May our hearts be stirred once again by this great news of great joy for all people. As one hymn writer wrote, Seek not in courts or palaces, nor royal curtains draw, but search the stable, see your God extended on the straw. What humility, what courage, what love you showed in your birth, life, and death. But the good news, Lord, is that you rose again and is alive, and you are with us. The only response you need from us is to say yes and accept this incredible truth. We pray that you would give us the courage to do that perhaps for the first time or perhaps for the 20th time. Wherever we may have been in our relationship with you, Lord, let this night be the night when we say, yes, Lord Jesus. In the next moment or two of silence, would you speak your mind to the Lord? Lord, we praise you and worship you, and we pray this in the most precious name in the world, Jesus Christ. And all the people of God said, Amen. Let us pray. Come to us, Lord Jesus. Be born in us this night, in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives. May the light of your life be kindled in us and lead us to the shining truth of God with us, God for us, God in us, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.